Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested, and falsely sentenced to death, but Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now. There's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Pay attention to the salvation message at the beginning. Jesus Christ, he died on a cross 2,000 years ago, so our sins can be forgiven past, present, future when we don't deserve it by the blood atonement available to all in the church age before the rapture of the church, which ends the church age. So what's that mean? Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, he, he died, he buried, he rose from dead, and the blood he shed washes away past, present, future sins. You have to believe with your heart. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. And as Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, it's not a work that any man can boast. You can't earn yourself into heaven. There's nothing you can do to make yourself righteous enough. So although you could be a good moral person here on earth, the reason you go to hell is not because you sinned. Rather, it's because you don't accept the free gift available by the blood of Jesus Christ to forgive you for those sins. Let's jump into the message today. I'm going to talk about that, that there is a definite period of time that will happen. I don't know how long it will be, but it will be a period of time there will be a small it could be small could be could be longer be, just ask some questions think out loud talk out loud once we show the verse i'm taking a look at first thessalonians chapter 4 this is the rapture verse verse 16 we, we're going to see how the lord comes out first of all the lord himself descends from heaven with a shout in verse 16 and then the second thing you see is with the voice of the michael the archangel so there is number two and with the third thing he comes is the trump of god and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, the trump of God, stop right there. Very important to understand. It is not in reference to Revelation 11 with the seven trumpet of the angels first. So the trump of God is not the tr it's not a trumpet. It's a, the trump is a sound that a trumpet makes. And so that what will happen at that point, the dead in Christ shall rise first. So that's the order of the rapture. It's a resurrection of the bodies of the dead to join the souls and spirit of the dead coming down with, coming with Jesus to meet him in the clouds. Verse 17, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be the Lord. So it looks like they're... That group will go first to meet Jesus in the clouds, and then there'll be some period of time. So looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we saw a definite order to things. We saw in verse 16, the Lord himself comes out with a shout. The uh, voice of the archangel, the second part, and the third part with the trump of God. Now if we go to 1 Corinthians 15, 53 to the end of the chapter, we're going to see more about that as well. If we go to Revelation 11... Verse 15 of Revelation 11. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of the world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, 
and he shall reign forever and ever. So that is at the end of the tribulation, when that seventh trump is blown, the rapture happens before the tribulation begins, and it's a trump voice, a that a trump is the noise that a trumpet would make, but this is coming from God, so it's distinct. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, see a little bit more in the rapture passages there that talks about that noise. And again, I think that's interesting to talk out loud about the gap when that first group resurrects and then the dead, the dead in Christ is that first group, but then there's those alive and remain. If that's us, will that be, you know, 30 seconds? Will it be 30 minutes? Will it be, at, you know, 30 minutes of silence in heaven? I'm not saying it will be. It's an interesting thought. Could there be like an hour? So imagine what you would do for an hour if you knew you got a warning shot that day. You you saw the, the, the trump. You heard the trumpet blast. There's probably an earthquake as the bodies come out. Now you know you're next. What do you do for the next whatever period of time it is? It's just something interesting to think about. Chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians will go, verse 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye... So that could be sunrise, sunset, Jerusalem time, in my opinion, at the last trump. A lot of people have that reference to the Feast of, of Trumpets. I don't know. It could be. It doesn't mean it is. It could be just the last trump that is blown out of a sequence of trumps before the rapture. So not really sure. But it says, for the trumpet shall sound, whatever that is, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So there's the first group being raised and getting their glorified bodies, and then we will be changed. So again, it sort of, again, corroborates that this happens, and then this happens. So it makes me wonder how long that gap is. There definitely appears to be a gap in between that. And again, this is not the last of the seven trumpets blown by the angels in the tribulation of Revelation eleven fifteen. First of all, the trump is not a trumpet. It is a sound the trumpet makes. Very important to, to know that. So whatever this, this trump is and this trumpet here, in, uh, we, the trump in 1 Thessalonians 4, which is the sound a trumpet makes, or this trumpet here in 1 Corinthians 15, the dead are raised at its last sound. The trump signals the pre-tribulation rapture. And so we probably will get to hear that. A trumpet sound, I believe it'll be like this, a trumpet sound that's maybe a little different or the same for the dead in Christ. And then a little bit of time, I don't know how much, and then the trumpet sound for us. So I do think we're going to have that warning. We're going to know as Christians the times and seasons. We might not know the day or hour until we hear that trumpet noise. And I think that's for a reason. One, we should always be looking for our blessed hope as a Christian. Two, you know, Satan and, and the evil forces, God may not want them to know when it's going to happen until it, it comes upon them like a thief in the night. But we, as Paul was saying, we are not of darkness. We are of the light. It won't take us by surprise. That's the point. Our children of Christ have the Holy Spirit in us. It wouldn't be surprised at, the, at that trumpet sound, that Holy Spirit within us jumps, you know, because it's going to be a harmonious sound of God. And we have the Holy Spirit from God in us. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And it says, verse 8, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. That should be our state. When I talk about our blessed hope, that's how you should feel. You'd rather be with God than our, in our present state. But the Lord will determine when we, when we die, when we go. Verse 9, Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be acceptable of him. Verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. And we're to fear the Lord, of, of course, amen. Uh, verse 17, we are a new creature down there. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Every aspect of our Christian life has changed. Yes, we're the same height. We look the same you know, things of that nature, physically speaking. But now we have this new nature. We're a new creature. If part of the body of Christ, we've been changed internally. And it's something we should do in these last times is to realize we need to fear God, walk with God, and avoid sin, and be an example to those around us. If we stay in our bad habits and our heinous sins that we used to have, then how are we going to outwardly appear as a new creature, as a someone, a royal priesthood, a guy, somebody who says, hey, you've changed a lot. You're now different than you used to be. That's a great way to test, to tell somebody why you've changed. I've changed because the Lord Jesus Christ 
is now in me and I, I accepted him as my Lord and Savior and it's it's made all the world of difference to me. I'm in a happier, better place. Let me explain why you've noticed I'm different and 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 how you can have that. If you and then they they may say, Yeah, I'd love to hear about it, or maybe they don't. But either way, it's a it's a way to plant a seed, it's a way to tell them all things and you have changed now because of him. And all power and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So Anyway, I hope today was a great message. I do believe there will be a, a time gap between that first resur- the first resurrection of the dead in the rapture and, the, and then those that are alive and remain. Don't know how long that will be. Sort of interesting questions you could ask, you know, what happens if the rapture happens and say it's an hour later and somebody gets in a car crash and dies? Well, do they miss the rapture? Of course not, but it's just something funny to think. I'm sure God has a plan for that if somebody were to die in that intermediate period. Uh, you sure you just get raptured right away. Uh, you get your new body right away if that would happen. But, but anyway, these are questions and thoughts that you know I have. Is you know we're always looking for a blessed hope, but we're always looking to serve the Lord as well. Leave your prayer request below if you need them, and subscribe and thumbs up. I know a lot of people are getting unsubscribed, so check that to make sure you're still subscribed to my channel. God bless and have a great day.